On one of the completely ordinary voyages, the ship Demeter takes on the task of delivering cargo, not suspecting that this cargo would turn out to be a horrifying creature aged 1,000 years. We're doomed crews, and we all know where he plans to deliver us. In 1897, the Russian ship Demeter was chartered to transport 50 wooden crates from Romania to England. After some time the local police were informed that the ship had been found wrecked and abandoned, with the ship's captain's log containing a description of a sinister voyage. Four weeks ago, the Demeter made a stop in Bulgaria to pick up the cargo and replenish the crew. The news of this spread instantly among the unemployed seamen of Varna. Dr. Clemens also hears this announcement and rushes to the recruitment site. He tries to convince Captain Wojcik's assistant that he would be a valuable member of the crew due to his medical skills and his education in astronomy at Cambridge. However, the assistant declines him, as he needs strong sailors, not intellectuals. Wojcik selects three sturdy sailors, one of whom is Juan Ayat, but immediately starts loading the wooden crate he's brought by the locals. The porters demand to finish the loading before sunset and to leave as soon as they are rid of the crates, handing a large sum of money to the assistant for the sailors, which surprises him, as he usually paid for cargo delivery. But time is of the essence, and the loaders diligently perform their work until the one-eyed man notices a dragon-shaped mark on one of the crates. His hand weakens, and the crate dangerously hangs over the quay where Captain Toby's grandson is playing at that moment. Clemens, who is nearby, sees this and rushes to save the child from the crate falling from a height. Wojciech is furious and ready to kill the one-eyed man, but he screams about a diabolical sign and, wishing salvation for the crew, leaves the ship. Captain Elliot is impressed by Clemens's agility and invites him to join the crew as a replacement for the one-eyed man, and no one notices that the fallen crate has been damaged. Soon, the ship departs from the pier and the porters on the shore cross themselves as they watch it leave. Grateful for his rescue, Toby immediately shows Clemens the ship and introduces him to the crew, starting with a dog named Heck. The boy demonstrates a coded knock, meaning attention, which everyone on the ship understands, and introduces his own crew, the animals for which he is responsible. Clemens is met by Cook with questions about his religion and is delighted that he is not a pagan and knows who Nicholas the Patron is. Meanwhile, the captain fills out the first page of the ship's logbook. There are nine people on board five sailors, two assistants, the cook, and the captain himself. The crew is in high spirits, the wind is favorable, and if the ship arrives on time, the payment is expected to be substantial, so the sailors are celebrating and singing in anticipation of a good meal. In the evening, Captain Elliot informs assistant Wojciech that he intends to leave his position and spend the rest of his life ashore, raising his grandson in a purchased estate in Ireland. He offers Wojciech to become his successor once the ship reaches London, considering him a good sailor. People are having a good time on deck, unaware that in the depths of the hold, the damaged crate begins to move as if someone wants to break free from it. And at night, while everyone is asleep, the rats scatter away from the mysterious cargo. The next day during breakfast, the sailors share their plans on how they will spend their money. Clemens laments that money cannot buy an understanding of the world because he wants to know why good and evil exist, and try to eradicate the latter. At that moment a worried heck rushes into the galley. Toby and Clemens rush downstairs and find the animals in great distress. The doctor is convinced that they simply sense an approaching storm, but suddenly something crashes in the cargo hold, and he sends the boy to inform the captain. He himself goes to the hold where he finds a broken crate and a pile of dirt containing the body of a young woman. He carries her upstairs, intending to offer help. Wojcik is against it, fearing the woman might be infectious, but the doctor cannot leave her without assistance and transfuses some of his own blood hoping to counteract any potential infection. Wojcik is hostile as free riders are always thrown overboard because it's the law. Clemens asks not to do that, and to release the rescued woman at the first port. The captain orders to prepare a secluded corner for her, and Toby is left to look after her while Clemens takes his watch. The Demeter enters the Aegean Sea, and when the second assistant Olgren scans the sea with his spyglass, he suddenly glimpses a horrifying inhuman face and then finds corpse worms on the deck before disappearing somewhere. Clemens tries to find him, and a sailor who appeared from behind the superstructure assures him that someone had just passed by. On the following night, the cook discovers the body of a torn apart dog in the pantry. He rushes to the pens and finds that all the animals on board the ship have been killed. People cannot understand who did this and why. The woman is too weak, and Heck himself fell victim to an unknown assailant. Disputes arise among the crew members. Moreover, if they make a stop at the next port, they will lose the desired bonus. 
The doctor assures them that rabies can only be transmitted to humans through a bite. Tensions escalate as the loss of the animals means a meager ration which does not contribute to their productivity. Furthermore, only a human could have opened the cages, and there are only two unverified individuals on board, Clemens and the unknown woman. The doctor is threatened with a knife, and he is forced to admit that judging by the evidence, a human could not have physically done this. Apparently, there is a great evil on board. Meanwhile, the woman who called Anna frantically moves about, hearing her name being uttered by someone terrifying. In the morning, fearing a rabies outbreak, the crew throws the animal corpses overboard. Toby mourns his pets. He promised the captain he would do his job properly so he feels guilty for what happened. Clemens comforts the boy, explaining that things don't always go as promised in the world. Later while working, assistant Olgren talks to the doctor about what he saw yesterday. He is convinced that Clemens also saw it but is somehow keeping it a secret. The doctor persuades him that he believes in science and progress, not the supernatural. The bad weather continues for three days, food is running out, the crew is unhappy and the doctor performs daily blood transfusions to his patient. However, her condition has not changed. Toby heard her repeating a couple of words in her sleep. It's the name Anna and the word food. Then the cook reports that the rats on the ship have disappeared which should be impossible because a rat-free ship goes against nature. One night one of the sailors goes out onto the deck and discovers a hole in the hatch cover as if someone tried to get out. He inspects the deck and is suddenly attacked by a horrifying monster. Clemens hears strange sounds, tries to locate the sailor but finds only his knife and traces of blood on the deck. In the morning the captain examines the area but no one understands what could have happened. Voshish suspects Clemens, but he refutes his arguments as he could not have killed someone without getting blood on himself. Besides, he reported the incident, which he would unlikely do if he were guilty. Moreover, all the animals had bite marks on their necks. At that moment, Anna finally regains consciousness and coming up on deck informs the crew that he is here. He will kill everyone who remains on the ship. Clemens comforts the woman, and later she reveals that she has spent her whole life in a village near an ancient castle where a monster dwells. She knows that the elders made a pact with it, giving up some to protect everyone. The name of this monster is Dracula, and he is on this ship. This means that none of them have a chance of survival. The night, a storm begins. The watchman hears a coded knock and goes to the deck, calling for assistant Olgren. He takes out a knife and inspects the deck when a horrifying creature attacks the sailor. Seeing it, the assistant climbs the rigging, leaving the ship without control. Clemens, awakened from his bed, rushes to the deck. With the help of other awakened crew members, they manage to regain control of the ship. However, the search for the missing crew yields nothing until a drop of blood drips onto Toby from above. It turns out that Olgren lost consciousness, tangled in the rigging, and has a minor wound on his face. The sailors lower the unconscious assistant down but they have to restrain him as he behaves irrationally. In the captain's log there is an entry suggesting that the ship is probably doomed as they are heading towards the Bay of Biscay and they are already missing two crew members. Clemens examines Olgren. He moves and makes sounds but doesn't regain consciousness. No one can understand what he was doing in the rigging and what's wrong with his neck. The captain orders the sailors to arm themselves and search the ship. He himself asks Toby to lock himself in the cabin and joins his crew. However, the boy hears strange noises and steps into the corridor where he encounters the now awakened Olgren. Toby breaks free and returning to the captain's cabin, locks himself in. However, the one who was recently a man smashes the cabin door with his own head. The crew on deck hears knocks. Toby is calling for help with a coded knock and they rush downstairs where the boy is trying to hide from the door-breaking monster. The men manage to subdue Olgren, but it turns out that Dracula has been in the cabin all along. While the crew tries to break down the doors, the monster bites Toby. Clemens transfuses the captain's blood to his grandson, but the boy doesn't regain consciousness. There are five days left until they reach London, and the remaining crew members try to do something, anything, to survive. They tie Olgren to the mast, fearing to leave him below. One day he says he feels his master nearby, and when the sun rises, he burns under its rays. The cook falls into a religious ecstasy, blaming the deceased for their lack of faith. Clemens contemplates the nature of Olgren's condition. It seems to be some kind of infection and most likely it is already in Toby's blood. He is much weaker than Anna and saving him will be more difficult. The doctor is convinced that they need to find and study the monster, then there will be a chance to cure those bitten by it, but Wojciech is ready to destroy the creature. 
Anna supports him and offers to help with this, as they are terrified of what Dracula could do if he reaches London. However, the people do not know how to kill the monster. At night, the cook steals a lifeboat and reciting prayers sails away from the ship. Meanwhile, Anna and Clemens search the crates, but they find only dirt everywhere. One of the crates is equipped with cunning locks, and upon opening it, they discover the place where Dracula sleeps during the day. He is currently chasing the lifeboat with the cook. That same night, Toby dies. In the morning, his body is wrapped in sailcloth for a burial at sea. During the funeral, the captain thinks he sees the body move. He tears open the sailcloth, and at that moment Toby opens his dead eyes and attacks the captain, but then he bursts into flames in the sunlight scorching his grandfather, and they throw him into the ocean. Later, the captain is placed in his cabin. Clemens tries to involve Wojciech in finding a solution, but he believes that nothing can save them now, and it is then that the doctor reveals his ongoing struggle. Despite his brilliant education and intellect, his skin color has always been a barrier to getting a good position. And now, he wants to understand what drives Dracula in order to block all paths for him and kill this creature. Anna nudges Clemens to the conclusion that Dracula originally calculated the number of people on the ship, one per night. And now they are where he wants them, one day's journey from London, so they need to kill him right now. The remaining crew members decide to try to destroy the ship and drown Dracula. Although Wojcik is against it, the team starts implementing the plan, preparing a trap. Learning of the intention to sink the ship, the captain takes up arms, but Anna reminds him of what Dracula does to people and gives him Toby's cross. He agrees to the demise of the Demeter. Night falls, Anna acts as bait on the deck while the others, armed hide on the sides. She is sure that Dracula will come for her, and then the rest will know what to do, but they did not consider the vampire's ability to fly. He manages to grab the last sailor. The fog obscures the view of the monster, and he throws Wojcik from the rigging. The assistant falls from a height, and now becomes the bait. He orders everyone to leave, and he punctures the ship's hull when he falls into Dracula's clutches. Clemens finds his body, notices the leak that is formed, and goes to find the captain. Elliot, meanwhile, holds the ship's wheel when he hears the monster's breath behind him. He holds Toby's cross forward, but it doesn't stop Dracula. Clemens finds him, and the captain's last words were about his true faith. Clemens addresses Dracula who apparently considers himself a god, but he lives in filth and feeds on human flesh, so he is far from being a god. At this moment the monster emerges on the deck and attacks the doctor, however Anna shoots him in the back. The monster roars and takes flight, attacking the girl. Now, Clemens comes to her rescue and strikes the monster with an axe. Anna runs to the lifeboat but sees how Dracula strangles the doctor, cuts the rope when the fallen mast pins Dracula to the deck. Anna and Clemens leave the ship, thinking that Dracula is doomed, but the ship drifts ashore where it crashes into rocks. Dracula discards the mast and rises into the air. Floating on the wreckage of the ship, Anna tells Clemens that she transforms into a vampire as a result of infection, and blood transfusions only delay her transformation. Not wanting to become a monster, Anna sails away from the doctor and willingly sacrifices herself to the sunlight. Clemens is the only one to make it to the shore. Newspapers print news about the ghost ship where there were no survivors when Clemens reaches London. And one day, in a tavern, he suddenly hears the conditional knock of the Demeter and sees an aristocrat with Dracula's face and Cain. The man swears to track him down and kill him, seeking vengeance for all the people the monster has destroyed. Bram Stoker's Dracula is undoubtedly one of the most influential novels in the vampire horror genre. This classic has spawned countless films, this adaptation, however, is an intermediate version, as it is based on one chapter from the book, dedicated to the vampire's journey from Transylvania to England, 